Good morning. I was originally going to do this lesson, Time to Leave Egypt, on a uh, Zoom lesson, but I realized that you won't have enough time to do this and the Bible check, and this one is longer. So I'm going to do a YouTube video on this one so that you can pause it and stop it and come back and you don't feel so pressured for time while we're all together on this. So the Bible lesson is called Time to Leave Egypt. And it's you're going to need page 99, 100, 101, and 102 in your packet. The first page starts like this. I'll go nice and slow, and there are some parts of this, again, that have homework in them, and I'll point them out to you when they get there. So we're going to do just the parts that we do together and get it done, and then I'll mark out the points that you need to do as homework, okay? So you'll do great, and so instead of this lesson on Friday on Zoom, we'll do your Bible check on Friday on Zoom, okay? We've got a lot of things coming up today. We're doing our science review on Zoom. And then um, tomorrow, tune in to a YouTube and we'll do our new uh, science experiment. It'll be fun. We'll make some colors. So this one's called Lesson 24, Time to Leave Egypt. And if you would follow along with me while I read, that'd be great. If you'd like to do it just like we do in reading class, that'd be great too. You can use your highlighter but please don't cover up the words as you read. Okay, time to leave Egypt. Now, after several hundred years of slavery, the children of Israel were getting ready to leave Egypt. They were to return to the land of Canaan, the land God had promised them. There were about two million people who were to leave Egypt. They took their families, their animals, and all their belongings and began the journey home. Okay, let's stop and write the number two million because we've been working so hard on place value. This is a good chance to, to pull that in. Now, if we remember our place value, we have hundreds, mm -mm. let me try that again, hundreds, tens, did it all wrong, let me try it again, tens, hundreds, oh, my goodness, I'm missing this all up today, let me start again. Start over here. Let's go. Close at the bottom. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and millions. Okay? right yep yeah, that's right wow I think I haven't had enough coffee this morning it's pretty early so forgive me for messing up my test my place value I know Jeremiah would have gotten that perfect he's my test pilot, or place value guy Damien's also pretty good at it anyway there you have it there are your place values ones tens hundreds thousands ten thousands hundred thousands and millions so if the story says that there were about two million people who were to leave Egypt, this is what it would look like. Zero, one, ten, zero, hundreds, zero, thousands, zero, ten thousands, zero, hundred thousands, and two million. And don't forget, when we write a big number like this, we separate the places by commas. So after hundreds, we put a comma. And after 100,000, we put a comma. So that's what 2 million looks like. Not this, because that looks like scribble. But down here, 2 million looks like that. So 
So the next direction say you're going to label each number on the map as shown below. And here are our choices. We have Oh, it's going to be one of those days, I see. Nile River, Red Sea, Mediterranean Sea, that's a big word, Egypt, Desert of Sinai, and Canaan, which is the promised land. Okay, and here's how it goes. Right here on our picture, it says number three. So number three goes in there, and if we look for number three, this is where the Mediterranean Sea is. So I'm just going to write that in here. And knowing my luck today, I've already spelled it out in pink, so I can just trace over it in blue. Mediterranean Sea. M E D I T E R R A N. E A N and C is S E A. Going fast, and that's okay. I have to keep going because of the video. But there's a pause button on this video, so anytime you need to pause and write that word down, please do that. This, the nice thing about this is it's self paced, you can go at your own pace. So if you're not done writing it down, Damien, take the time, pause it. It's okay, we're all good, okay. We got plenty of time today. The next one is number six over here, and we can see from the map that number six is Canaan. And I'm going to write that C A N A A N. Canaan, which was the promised land. All right, did you get that, Jamia? You're doing great. I know you are. And as we go over down a little further, we get this number one, this little fork thing here. And this one, Kylie sounds like she knows it. This is the Nile River. So Nile is spelled N-I-L-E-R-I-V-E-R. -E okay, we'll save the next big one for... Austin. We give Austin number five today. Austin, do you know what is right here on our map? If we look up here at number five, it says the Desert of Sinai. That is spelled D E S T R T O F S I N A I. And this is where when we do our super C. I've decided just to leave it up here because we use it all the time. We have to have spaces in between this T, after this F, um, up between these two words. You have to have a good finger space in there so I know your first word from your next word. Okay, next one we'll give to, let's see who I've done with. Uh, Tislea. Tislea, let's do number two. If we look at number two, the answer is red. C, and that is spelled R E D capital F E A. Proper nouns are always capitalized. We've been working on that in English this week. If it's a thing, it's not capitalized, but the name of the thing is capitalized. So C would not be capitalized, but Red C would be capitalized because that's its name. And the last one, let's give that one to Jeremiah. I think Jeremiah, tell us a little bit about what goes in here. Now, Jeremiah is going to look at number four, and then he's going to look up four here, and he's going to say, Egypt. So I miss your voice, Jeremiah, but you're right. Egypt goes right up there. E G Y P. Very good, very good. You guys did great on that. Um, if you wrote two million down on here, that's great. If you didn't, that's okay too. I just wanted to bring back from math, 
to jump up into Bible to show that everything is connected. There's math in Bible. There's math in reading. There's math in science. There's lots, lots and lots of math in science. And likewise, when we studied social studies, we talked about places on the map. So now our social studies places come up into the Bible, into Bible class as well. So everything is connected. So if you're good at one subject, reading or math or science, it's great. But you need to know how all the studies connect to each other and everything is connected. All right? It's hard to do math unless you can read. So that's why we study reading so that it helps us in math. All right, on to the next page, and that's just right on the back of here. And there is one spot in the middle here where you're going to do some homework, and I've marked that off. I'll mark it with a big H. But let's start reading first. The title of this one says, Two signs of God's presence. Now, the word presence is big, and what it simply means is how we know that God is there. We can't see God, so we have to, to be able to know that he's with us. And one of the things that God does in the Bible frequently is gives us signs, little clues. Hey, see that? That means I'm here. I'm with you. I love you. I'm guiding you. Okay. During the plagues, God had been showing his people that they could truly trust him. Now, he showed them again that he would be with them all during their journey. Now, if you're in a group of two million people and you're going to a different land, it's scary. It's a long way to travel. If we saw the distance, Egypt was way down here, Canaan was way up here on our map. It's a long way to travel and it can be scary. So the people needed to know that, yes, God was guiding them, God was leading them, and God was going to take care of them. So this next part right here is, I'm going to mark this with an H. This is a homework part in here, and it tells you to read Exodus 13, 21, 22. You guys have been so great at looking up Bible verses in your Bible. Um, Michael Boyd and Michael Cooper are stars at this. They can find those Bible verses and put them in there. Jeff has been great with finding these and putting them in. So this is your homework for this little part of it. You're going to read Exodus 13, 21 to 22, and you will find two ways in which God helped the people know that he was with them. Question one said, what did the Lord use during the day to show the people he was with them? And what did he, how did this help his people? Those answers are in this Bible verse and I want you to write them here and here. Please use your super sentences. Um, it's okay, completely okay to tell mom what you want to write down and she'll write it on your board, but you, have to copy it here. I don't want this in mom's handwriting. I don't want it in brother's handwriting. I don't want it in Uncle Bob's dog's handwriting. I need your handwriting right here. Okay? I need you to give me this answer so that I know you're practicing your letters. Okay? And now down to this part. It says, finish this picture by drawing the pillar of cloud. Color the sky blue to show it was daytime. And that's your homework in there too. You're going to do this one for me. This was the pillar of cloud is what was described up in this verse. So you're going to draw it for me here. Okay? You're doing great. Great, great, great. You have so many good artists. I know you'll do great on that. So now we're finished with this page and that brings us up to this second part. I'm going to move it up a little bit here. And this part is homework as well because these questions pertain to that Bible verse. And they say, what did the Lord use during the night to show his people they were, he was with them? And how did this help? And then, did the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire ever leave the people? Kind of a yes or no question there. 
and then here. Finish this picture by drawing the pillar of fire. Color the sky black to show it was nighttime. You want to use some contrasting colors there. I like when the, the black on the, with the fire color behind it. That would be a pretty picture. So show this for me. Some homework right there for you. And the next section says, God guides us. God used a pillar of, of cloud and a pillar of fire to guide his people in the desert. As your teacher tells you, write two ways God guides us. Okay. I'm going to give you this answer. I'm going to write it down for you. My writing's a little faster. Um, take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. After I write it, I already know what I'm going to say. That's why mine is going to be faster, because I already know what I'm going to say. So when you write this, pause that video and write it on your paper. Okay? Take your time. It's okay. So two ways that God guides us. He guides us by the word of God. So let's write that. By the word. Now these aren't super sentences, but we do have some important words in there. Uh, God. And the word God is always capitalized. Jamia, this is her thing. She's excellent at that. So uh, God is always capitalized. I'm going to capitalize the word here. And then the next way we know is by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy, and that's a capital letter too, Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. Okay, pause the video. Those are going to take a moment. Get it down. It's okay. Pause that video. That's why we do it. Sometimes I wish we had the video in class so we can just pause it and finish up and then unpause. So now we go on to the back of this page, and this is a really long lesson today, but an important and lots of fun, so we'll take our time. The back says, who is the Holy Spirit? And it looks like it's got some word puzzles in here. I like word puzzles. How about you? Um, it would be have been fun in the classroom to get out our letter tiles and, and write these words out, but we'll just write them down and you can use or put some letter squares in your bags, in your manipulatives bags, if you'd like to cut these out and pull them out and write these words, that's fine too. All right. It says the Holy Spirit is our helper and guide. He comes to live inside us when we trust Jesus as our Savior. He is God. And the directions say, unscramble the words in the sentences to learn more about the Holy Spirit. Use these words to complete the puzzle. Right? We always want to look at our choices first. So, take a look at our choices today. We've got inside, holy, yours, serve, Truth, repent, patient, love, inner, and obey. Okay. And number one says, the Holy Spirit is perfect. He is, hmm, and then you've got these words in here, or these letters in here, L-Y-O-H. Well, if you unscramble those words and you mix them up, they make the word holy. The Holy Spirit is holy. H, given, O, I, Y. Holy. Okay? Good. Number two says, the Holy Spirit will help you to blank your parents. And this word begins with O, so we can see the word is obey. O, B, I, Y. Obey your parents. Number three says, God is blank, and so is the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
God is, begins with an L, love. That's right. God is love. And so is the Holy Spirit. I got my coffee now. Maybe it'll help me with place value, do you think? Love. L O V E. Okay. Number four says, the Holy Spirit belongs to you, so he is blank. Begins with a Y. Yours. Right up there. Yours. He is yours. Y O U R. And the reason I'm not writing the first letters on these is because it's already given to us. We just have to write them. Number five says, the Holy Spirit helps us blank the Lord and others. Begins with an S. That word is serve. I should be crossing these off if I'm done with them. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? I'm just going to make a mark here. We use holy. We use obey. We use love. There it is. We used yours, and we used serve. So we know that these are the ones we have left to choose from. Okay. Um, number six says, it begins with a P, and it says, when we sin. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, begins with a P. it says, when we sin, the Holy Spirit is blank with us. Hmm. The word of the year that begins with P. No. 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 There it is. Patient. He is patient with us. He is. He's very patient with me. And I hope you were patient with me while I figured out place value. E A T I E N T. Patient. Very good. Oh, sorry, cross that off here. Patient. Next one says, number seven says, after we trust Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit lives blank us. Hmm. Begins with an I. Oh, I see it. Let's make sure there are no more. There's two. What do we do now? Oh, no. We've got inside and we have inner. So the next thing we're going to do is try them on, just like you'd go to the store and you'd try on a shirt or some pants to make sure they fit. Let's make sure it fits. This is the R in our super sentence. We have to make sure it's right. So let's try them both. And then it says, after we trust Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit lives inside us. That sounds good. Let's try the other one on just to make sure. After we trust Christ our Savior, the Holy Spirit lives in us. In us. Does that sound right? No. So there's another helper, another tool in your toolbox to let you know that inside is the correct answer. Another um, another clue we could have used was to count the letters. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six blanks. This one has one, two, three, four, five. So we know that can't be it. This one has six. Use any clue you can find when doing puzzles. You'll see, you may be able to do puzzles on the internet while you're um, staying at home, and those are always fun, but use all of your clues. Use everything you can. Inside. My birds outside want breakfast. Okay, number eight says, it begins with an R, and the clue says, when we sin, the Holy Spirit wants us to blank or turn from our sin. Which of these words begins with an R and means to turn from our sin? Well, there it is right there. Repent. R U P E N T. Repent. Always good to repent. Number nine begins with the letter I. And says, oh, if we look up here, we've only got two left, a T and an I. It must be this one. But just to make sure, just to check ourselves, let's read our clue. The Holy Spirit helps our blank thoughts to be right. Our blank thoughts to be right. 
inner, our inner thoughts. Yeah, that makes sense. I am an E inner thoughts. Good. Put that one off our list. Means we've got truth left, but we definitely want to read our clue to make sure. Begins with T. So far, so good. The Holy Spirit cannot lie. He shows us the truth. Very good. T R E. There you have it. Good job. Very, very good job. Good job on this. And like I said, pause the video if you need to. I'll see you later today for our, let's see, what do we have? Our science review. And then on Friday, instead of doing this on Friday, we're going to go ahead and do the Bible check because you need this in order to do well on the Bible check. So I'll switch that up and I'll let your parents know. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you a little later today for reading. We've got three more reading groups to go through for day three and four. And, of course, our science review. Have a good day.